Hello, everyone. Welcome to WGSN DB Going Solo Network. This is the Chicks Passion Show, and I am Cece Schatz, the Doyen of Relationship Building. And tonight we're going to do something a little bit different. Unfortunately, Kathy couldn't be here with us tonight, and uh, Kathy Lamb, my sidekick. And uh, we do the show generally together. And so she wasn't able to be with us. So I am going to be doing it with our wonderful guest tonight. And let's bring her on. Hello there. Hi. Hi. It's great to see you. Now, Jasmine, we're talking about following our passion. And Jasmine certainly does that. She's Australian's top glamour model for 2017, 2018. You were the Playboy cover model and a Playmate. And uh, you also host a show that we also distribute, which is wonderful. It's the, uh, and pronounce your last name for me, so I make sure I have it correct. Jasmine? Shojai. Shojai. I want to make sure I say it right. Shojai. So Jasmine Shojai reality series, um, really it's a life of a model. And so you take us through what it's like being a model. And um, it's not all fun and games at times. It's a great deal of work, isn't it? Oh, most definitely. There's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes. And I guess the reality series is not only going to um, highlight my fun and fantastic moments, but also highlight what really goes on behind the scenes and all the work that really goes into my career. So, yeah. Yeah. And you are an amazing woman. We had you on the show before and I just love you. So you are so real down to earth. You shared um, a part of your journey. And so let's go ahead and embrace our audience again here tonight. Those that may not have listened to that particular show. And we do have it on our uh, going solo media Dot com. So if anyone wants to go and listen to it, I hope that they do. But tell us a little bit about your journey as to why, you know, what your passion is in, in getting into modeling. So modeling has always been just a huge inspiration for me ever since I was a little girl. And I suppose I just was really inspired by all these models that I saw on the television. I just felt like these were amazing women. They were just so gorgeous and so fantastic. And I was like, wow, like I think that would be something um, I'd like to be one day. And there wasn't any specific reason for it. And I think that's a good sign because a lot of the time people say, oh, I'm going to be something because it will make me popular or I want to be something because my parents told me to or something like that. So for me, it was just pure inspiration. And um, it wasn't until I was 21 and that I decided to really do something spontaneous and that was to do my very first photo shoot. So it was a very exciting experience, I remember, and I just wanted to be there all day. And ever since, I never looked back. And modeling has been, yeah, my my career, my passion as well. It was something that definitely took a lot of time and effort. And I think things started to become very serious about 12 months or just over a year in. And it definitely has been a lot of hard work, but a lot of fun as well. <laughs> Well, you are amazing because it's very prestigious to be a Playboy cover model. And uh, mm -hmm. you've definitely done that several times, haven't you? Yes, three times, actually. Um, as of earlier this month, I've just done my 10th Playboy appearance. And um, I recently as in this month, did a cover for Playboy Sweden. So that's out now. There are print co copies coming, um, like autograph print copies coming from me very soon. So that's something um, I'm about to release. But I'll just show you. I've just got yeah. the posters of my actual cover with me now. So without releasing the whole pictorial, of course, um, fans can, like, get an actual side poster from the cover itself um and another pictorial images image as well so yeah i hope you can all see that but it's very exciting for me um the posters look amazing we've just received so many amazing feedbacks from fans and i'm very excited to be releasing these so um they're available now on my online store and as i said there will be autographed print copies coming very soon as well as calendars actually so we're doing a lot um, but for fans that are generally in interested in just seeing um, 
what Playboy Sweden is all about, they do have their website if people search that up. And um, people can instantly see the entire digital copy online as well. So it was definitely a very exciting achievement for me, um, especially, you know, with everything that's happening this year. Um, I don't want to say I was negative thinking or anything like that but um earlier on when all all of these things or global events started happening i i will admit i was um i suppose concerned on what the rest of the year would hold for me but um i'm really glad i pulled through with my team and we're very excited to have um been able to do so many things um despite the circumstances I'm I'm excited for you and you couldn't happen to a better person. I tell you, you are just a sweetheart and you work very, very hard. Those are gorgeous pictures. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, to take a picture like that, like this this picture that you've taken on, on the cover there, how many takes do you think you have to do? Um, I suppose a lot because it depends on a lot of things. And I think generally speaking, without pinpointing the different um you know, techniques people use for photography. Generally speaking, you know, you'll do a photo shoot um, with an experienced model like myself and the model will pose with, like, limited direction naturally because, you know, that's what we're trained to do. And um, the photographer, depending on what speed they're shooting with the camera, you know, they can take, you know, hundreds of shots from the same general pose as such. So I, I think at the end, when it comes to the image selection, there may be like easily up to 10 shots of the same pose, literally. And I guess from whether it's from my perspective or my teams when they're reviewing the images, they'll then select the best looking one from there. And, you know, sometimes it is the slightest difference in the pose that makes the image look a lot better. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, different, different people look through for different things. Naturally, as a model yourself, you look through your images and you look at any imperfections in you rather than the rest of the room or the rest of the studio. And, um, yeah, so it's it's very – it can vary in terms of how many takes there may be. But generally speaking, you know, at the end of a the shoot, there will be hundreds of images um, and a lot of them can be, I suppose, similar. But at the end of the day, yeah, there can be a lot of images after. Now, after you, you have the input, though, on which pictures are selected then, or do you kind of narrow it down and then, then it goes to them and they decide on which ones, or how does that work? Um, for the photo shoot itself, it was – so it was produced right here in Australia, and I will admit my um, my manager and, and my team, we, we weren't really that certain what was going to happen – with the images um, from a yeah from a publishing point of view right after for for us it was like okay you know we'll do the shoot and obviously um, select the best images and um, it wasn't until a couple of months later um, my my manager said well we have this opportunity to submit um, the images um to playboy sweden and of course by you know I, I of course i gave it the green light and said yes let's go ahead so it was very exciting for me um you know the whole experience it was a bit nerve-wracking this year because um besides playboy i did do a lot of other magazine features and i was personally surprised by the amount of um, magazines and media outlets that was that were looking for content and I remember another industry professional saying you know during this time it's probably very difficult for some places to receive content because of the restrictions so you know for a lot of people who are able to work um it's kind of great because again a lot of these um magazines need content or they need people um like myself to to um to publish their work so i was very surprised by the amount of opportunities there were this year um i have done a few other covers and a few um other interviews so yeah at the end of the day there can be a lot of work involved but yeah we pulled through yeah i'm so glad to hear that you know i follow you on facebook and your pictures are just stunning they're just you're just beautiful and they're just they're so tastefully done and you know i i just really admire you for 
going through the path. And so what do you see your, for yourself, you know, goals in the future? What do you, to, what are you wanting to achieve? Um, there's so much I actually want to achieve. Like I think, you know, sometimes I think to myself what I have on display on social media is just the, the tip of the iceberg that makes sense um, because there's been so many discussions between myself and, and you know, my family and, and my team where I say, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that. And I think there's only so much time you have to do things. Um, but for the future from a modelling or from an acting point of view, I really want to just push out and do, yeah, do more you know, covers, do more Playboy appearances. Um, I do want to pose more for Maxim as I've done a couple of appearances there. And I, I definitely just want to push myself or do the very best I can and, and just get out there. Mm -hmm. And for acting especially because I've only just really stepped into the acting industry. I've done a couple of screen gigs and I really want to push forward in that. I think acting is definitely going to open up more avenues and when I think about it, of course, in comparison to my modeling, it's still very new to me. So I think, um, again, I think pushing myself forward in that industry will be very interesting and it'll be very interesting to see what I get out of that. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, I love the videos that you make when you when you take them back, you know, and show all that you have to go through in order to do a you know, a set, a modeling set. And it really opens our eyes to not only the preparation that you have to go through, but also the business aspect of it. Because there's a tremendous amount of planning, organizing, you know, uh, taking, you know, getting all of the uh, team members all together, um, you know, and then all your outfits and makeup and hair and, you know, all of the various different elements that comes into play with like just one picture or something like that. It's like, and so I love the videos. I hope you will continue with the videos. I think they're, they're absolutely marvelous. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. I really like behind the scenes videos. I really like videos that effectively, you know, showcase what I get up to. Cause I think, you know, I think it, all stems back from my childhood again um pretty cool like they 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 show off exactly what's happening but they look really f phenomenal at the same time and I think a lot of it you know comes down to a lot of technical aspects like yeah. the lighting um how the video is edited together the music and so on so there's a lot that comes down to that but again that's another passion of mine yeah, I, I, I just love what I've seen so far. And I think you're doing a, mar a marvelous job with putting it all together. Have you ever thought of doing any kind of interviewing, like interview other models or other people in the industry and bringing that uh, type of uh, information forward for people? I definitely have. And I think the most um, difficult thing for me this year was whilst I was able to do a lot and, you know, really push myself out there, I guess there were still um, bits and pieces that could have been done that perhaps weren't able to be done because of the circumstances. So I'm hoping next year there will be more opportunities for, for me, but also I guess more opportunities to expand my um my social media, my reality series as well, especially as that was um, something that's, you know, positively still developing. So I'm hoping to really get in with more industry professionals and, yeah, perhaps do some interviews as well. Yeah, that would be fun. You know, I've seen you grow so much from the last time we talked and you're just, you're, you're just such a beautiful person and you're, I don't know, you know, they're, you've got a quiet um, demeanor about you and you're very sincere. And I just hope that people don't always get that from the pictures. So I, I like the idea that you do the video because I think that brings the, the true flavor of you out, the, the true person that you are. And so, yeah, it's just very cool. And it's nice for uh, you know us to see the other side of things and, and appreciate the work and all of the efforts that goes into play with that. So, um, but you know, this virus has really um, hindered so many plans. And so I hope that you don't let those um, get in your way and that you just continue to strive and take the opportunity, the quiet time to be able to really do your planning and, 
I move forward in in the transition that you're making in your life because you you've just uh, really gone a long ways. Oh, most definitely. And I, I've been noticing my, that myself and I can, I will admit, I can be very self-critical and I can always think, oh, maybe I could have done this this way or maybe I could have done better. And I think that's very normal from, you know, from what I've heard from other models and industry professionals. And yeah, moving forward, obviously, you know, to be persistent, determined and a lot of smart work and planning will help. And, you know, also to be optimistic because I think a lot of people have been impacted too much about what's going on behind around them. And, I mean, I, I hate to say this because I can understand how important, you know, people's lives are and I understand how serious this all is. But I, I really feel um, from at least in Australia, you know, I, I think to a certain extent um, sometimes the media didn't really help, you know, or just showered the television with with um, events and it really, I, I suppose, exaggerated um, all of the things that were happening. And I, I felt that was just really not helpful if you just want to have a, a positive mindset. So even if you weren't modelling, even if you were um, doing some completely other industry, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Um, healthy thinking is actually very important in order to to not only perform but to move forward. And that's something else I learned um, through professional development lessons, actually. Um, I've always learned that, yeah, yourself as in your health and your thinking plays a very vital role. So um, knowing that and obviously knowing what's going on, you know, I really had to, I guess, be aware of, of that fact. So I, I, you know, as much as it was important to stay safe, I also stayed very optimistic and made sure that I was, I had a healthy mindset to move forward. Yeah, that's great. That's great to hear. Yeah, you know, the, what I take from your pictures is the glamour. You have that, um, that, that old score, the old time glamour look. And uh, it seems like when I look at all of your pictures and things that you do on Facebook and, and that you post and all of that kind of thing, it, you're just, it's, it's just such a nice, refreshing thing to see. And um, bringing that back, you know, with your, with your makeup, the way your makeup is and, and some of the poses that you, you do and some of that dresses that you wear are just gorgeous. And so, you know, I think it's a, it's a, it's a nice, refreshing um, thing to look at when you're having all this negative stuff around it's nice to be able to see that something that's a little bit glamorous and we're thinking oh can we and that's another thing your pictures tell a story right and you're sharing that story with the audience and so when you're glamorous like that it puts us in a whole nother place you know we're not sitting behind our screens on on the computer we're actually envisioning that you know that how, how glamorous that the life is, the life maybe we want, that kind of thing. So yeah, it's a, I think it's a beautiful thing how you can transform um, other people to, to, to really step into those shoes. Oh, most definitely. And um, like, you know, going back to pictures and modeling, it's, it's very funny because I remember in my very first modeling lessons, like four, four and a half years ago or something like that, um, I was always told if you are not feeling well on the inside, not necessarily like being sick, but just if you're very grumpy or you're very nervous or uncomfortable, that's really going to show in the pictures. So obviously to become more comfortable as a model takes time. But again, it comes back to your mindset. Mm -hmm. So I think literally in modeling, being optimistic and comfortable is probably the way to go. Otherwise, you're not going to look very happy in a way in your in your images. Mm -hmm. And I think the funny thing is that, that comes down, again, back to life or back to career developing. If you're not thinking right, then you're probably not doing right either. Mm -hmm. So I have to say, like, you know, going back to my images and being all glamorous, that's, you know, all thanks to you know, myself developing as a model and, and learning and doing doing the 
you know, doing the necessarily necessary skills it takes to pose and so on. And um, then, yeah, I, I have to say, again, it, it's, it all comes down to my positive mindset. I think it's very important to, yeah, be, be happy or, or be the best that you can be. And, um, and yeah, and I hope I can spread more of that positivity to, to, you know, audiences, the people around me. Yeah. Well, we can definitely see that it's your passion because you love what you do. It comes, it totally comes out in every essence of your work and even here tonight. So we can see that you love, you absolutely love what you do. And let me ask you just out of curiosity, like when you talk about the training, how much training, like, did you have to go through because you're such an expert, what you do, at least it looks to me that you are. So to get to, to that place, I mean, how many, how much, how many hours or days or, or what, what's the program that you go through if other models are, are listening? I remember like, especially for the first three and a half years, I was practicing in the mirror at home, like in a large mirror pretty much almost every day if not every second day for 15 minutes practicing the poses that I was taught by you know industry professionals um you know making sure those poses actually look right you know what I mean because sometimes um you know for people who have modeled you know you'll take a picture of yourself and think oh why did I move like that and that it makes completely complete sense because you're not seeing yourself whereas you know practicing in the mirror and doing more photo shoots and getting the guidance from the photographer, for example, mm -hmm. is just going to automatically create like some sort of muscle memory or memory in your in your in your mind on how you should move or how you should pose and you know how you will look at certain angles. So it's it's really funny because a lot of people can you know will say, oh, that sounds complicated but it really isn't especially you know again the more you practice and the more you get into into doing modeling so I have to say there definitely was a lot of hours put into it yeah I bet there is and and some of the uh positions that you get in they look stunning they look beautiful but you know that they're not that comfortable and so you're, you know, because you're uh, you're trying to display whatever um, outfit or whatever you have in a, a particular way, and so you're moving in a, in that way for for the outfit to be able to be seen, you know, the, in the right way, in the right light, and all of that. So it's a it's amazing to uh, to see how how it how it all works together. But you do a great job. It's uh, it, you, you're beautifully done. So. It's um, I can definitely see that you've spent a lot of time perfecting your art. And uh, so that's great. Most definitely. Thank you. It, it's great to receive feedback again. Like I think especially during these times, you know, like people can feel really alone. So I think in general, it's always good to to hear that you're doing well. Um, it's always good to hear from fans that, you know, you, you're doing really well because I think the the funny thing is one of the hardest things I struggled with this year, despite, you know, besides, you know, from business trying to move forward and so on, um, was just that feeling of less connectivity with people. Like, um, I guess not being able to, to, to see people, not being able to really um, communicate. Because I, I felt sometimes, you know, as much as we have technology, it, it can still be very hard to you know, to reach out. And I think, again, um, you know, I do want to thank all the industry professionals that have um, worked with me this year, if they're watching this, um, as well as those that my team and I have been connecting with overseas. Um, because, yeah, we were planning to go um, to the United States this year. So that had to be postponed, of course. And um, we've been very, yeah, very fortunate that we've been able to stay in touch with people and just, you know, um, let them know when when we are able to return. So it's definitely a working process. I'm I'm very glad that we, yeah, managed to pull through and we had that optimistic mindset and said, okay, we won't let this, you know, take over us. We will continue to work. We'll continue to do all the necessary steps we need to do in order to complete our goals. And um, we'll just stay connected with people. So it's been amazing how how positive um, many individuals have been so I'm very very thankful for that 
Yeah, it's true. You've done a great job and being able to do and through one of the difficult times, you know, with the virus and everything. So it's a, uh, it's it's great that what you've done and now you have accomplished so much. And so we're gonna have to change that now to 2020 Playboy <laughs> Cut for Model. <laughs> so we're gonna have to change our dates. But you also have um, a tremendous amount of awards that you've received. Uh, too. And I didn't put all of those up or in and everything, but we do have that on our website. So if anyone wants to go and look, but you, you know, you have really worked hard to pro perfect your, your field to really, to be a professional in what you do. And so we want to honor and respect that. And um, I'm looking for great things in the future for you. So I'm going to keep on following you on Facebook. So if anyone's out there, you know, you want to follow her on Facebook, you can, you can do so. She I know you would love that. And what else can we do to support you? Oh, most definitely. So um, yeah, give me a follow on Facebook and Instagram. So that's Jasmine Shojai model. Um, for Twitter, it's Jasmine underscore Shojai. Um, again, I am selling these posters online um, as well as um, other posters that I have from my other features this year. So it definitely has been a very exciting year um, despite um, the global circumstances. So if people head over to my Instagram, they just head over to the link that's in my bio and that's my official online store. In the meantime, there are printed, like the actual printed magazine copies of Playboy Sweden coming soon. Mm -hmm. So I will be selling um, autographed copies of those as well. So that will be something um, I'm very excited about and I'm sure my fans will be as well. Um, yeah, otherwise there's my reality TV series and for that um, all you have to do is head over to the Daily Motion and, and search Jasmine Shojai TV and I'm happy to spell out my name as well if anyone um, needs that. So for my first name it's just J-A-S-M-I-N. For my last name, it's S-H-O-J-A-I. So I, I really appreciate everyone's support. It's definitely been, you know, mostly a very exciting year, actually, um, I have to say. And it's definitely, you know, again, all thanks to being optimistic and just putting in all the hard work. So um, I'd just like to thank everyone for watching this and, of course, for all the industry professionals um, this year for, I guess, you know, being a part of all the amazing projects we've had on. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, it's great having you and it's just a delight to see you move forward and be strong through all of this and and uh, good things are around the corner. We'll try to see if we can put a link um, on your page that will go into being able to purchase those. Um, and get an autographed copy of it would be great to have. So I know our office will we'll get one for sure. So it'd be nice to. Awesome. <laughs> we love you. We think I just think you're just the most wonderful person, and so we just want to support you as much as we can. And I'm looking forward to all the wonderful things that are going to happen for you in the future. So you know, just keep doing what you're doing. You're do, you know you've got the positive mindset you're working your passion you're doing what you love to do and you're doing a great job absolutely great job thank you so much you're very welcome well thank you for being on the show today i really appreciate it and we hope you'll come back on again okay most definitely <laughs> okay all right we'll talk to you later wow this is awesome to be able to have jasmine on and you know as i said she's a delight she's a, she had to rush off and do some other things here so we want to um you know honor and respect her time but i don't think people truly um understand the work that's involved in what she does do and so when we look at oh she's a playboy uh cover model She's a cover model and that's pretty prestigious in what she does. And she works very hard getting, getting there and doing what she does. But the most important thing is she's living her passion. She's living her dream. She's working towards what she truly wants to do. And that in itself is just something that we all want to strive for. So we can use her as an example of being able to go from a very young age to looking in the mirror, trying to get those poses down, trying to be able to get the look right that will get launch her into another arena and, and into 
being Australia's top glamour model. So, I mean, that is a pretty prestigious thing to do. And so kudos to her for that. So now let's talk about your life purpose. Let's talk a little bit about your um, passion, finding your own passion. And how do you discover that, right? You know, as you're looking, you know, at your life today and with all the COVID and all the different changes that are happening, there's a shift that's taking place now. And this isn't a negative um, shift. This could easily be a very positive shift for you. So it's all like Jasmine said, it's in the mindset. It's in where you want to go and then the steps that it takes for you to be able to achieve that. There's really no, no roadblocks in your way to be able to achieve the things that you want to achieve. So let's talk about some steps that you could possibly do that. How to discover your own um, passion. So what you want to do is you want to explore the things you love to do and what comes easy for you. For instance, Jasmine had said that she loved being able to, you know, she just idolized the models that were out there. She idolized that particular um, field. And so she wanted to be a part of that. And so she, she immersed herself into trying to learn how to go about doing that. So ask yourself, what do you truly love to do and what comes easily to you? Those are the areas that you want to try to start focusing on. Then the other thing is ask yourself what qualities you enjoy expressing the most in the world. What do you truly want to be able to give to the world? What do you want to be able to share with the world, being able to, you know, become and step into the person that you want to be, right? Because we all work very hard on, you know, our work and all of this different stuff. But do we honestly step into to whom we are going to be? And each day we're transitioning into to someone new, right? We are um, opening ourselves up to new horizons. We're exploring new things. And so therefore our world is forever changing. It's forever shifting. And so what you want to ask yourself is what, what, what can I give of value? What is going to be able to transcend me into, you know, this next time in my life? And what can I give to other people? Because sometimes it's not all about, you know, us. It's also about helping other people, giving them something. We can use even Jasmine again as an example. What she gives other, other people is that glamour, right? Living in a world that we will never experience, but we, through her beautiful pictures, through her um, art of modeling, we can then transcend into that place and time. Just like her, you know, we're going backstage and, and doing the uh, videos of what she's, what the work that she's having, the connection she's making, the process that she's doing. It, it allows those that want to get into that particular field a flavor for it. So there again, you want to be expressing the most in the world. Um, create a life purpose statement. That is really a, a big thing. And that's something you want to do, whether you are kind of know your passion or not. You want to create your purpose statement. You want to take a few moments and write down a description of what the world would look like if it was operating perfectly according to what you want, right? According to what you um, what you feel like living your best life is. So you want to create this statement of what is, if, if this is my purpose, what does it look like? What does the end result look like? And it's not necessarily having a purpose or a passion in life. It's not about the dollars. It's about the feeling of being able to transform and be who you want to be, um, what's important to you. It's about your core values or your core being, um, the essence of yourself. And so that's what's important. Follow your inner guidance. And uh, what is your heart telling you? You know, whatever we want to do in life, we've got to think about what is our heart telling us that we want to do? How do we want to transcend into um, the, the next world? Or how do we want to be able to uh, help? other mankind or other people and, and all of that. How, how do we, how do we do that? And so I think that is a very important thing is to, to think about your inner guidance. What is your gut telling you to do? Right. And so often we don't listen to ourselves. How many times have you heard someone is doing a job that they 
um, that they don't like doing, right? They got into this particular field because they just kind of walked into it, but it wasn't really something that they wanted to do. Life is so short. So why not? If, if you have to do a job that you maybe don't necessarily care to do, find your passion outside of that. Find out if it's, you know, you know, this one guy I was talking to, he likes to help kids play baseball and things like that. But, you know, figure out what your passion is in life. I know I have figured out mine and, and it's what gets me up in the morning. It's what keeps me up late at night, but I love it. And I'm, I'm walking in and, and stepping in the steps that I want to step into that that's really good for me. What is your step? right? What do you want to walk into? What do you want to do? Where do you see your horizon, right? And so those are the, the things that are important. So if you're not doing exactly and you have to do it because you need to, you need to make money, then that's okay. You know, that that's okay to do that. But the reality is, is that you still have to find your passion from within because you can't go through life not having that feeling, not having that feeling of really living your life to the fullest. And I think that's what we miss if we don't follow our passion, if we don't do something that we're passionate about or be with somebody that we're passionate with, right? So uh, those are the kind of things. Um, and then did we talk about, I don't, we didn't decide where you want to go. Okay, I figured out what my passion is. So now I need to decide where I want to go, how I want to be there. I need to visualize and I need to affirm it that that this is um, what I want to do. This is the direction I want to go in. And like, for instance, we can again go back to Jasmine. She decided what she wanted to do and she took the necessary steps in order to achieve that. She figured out the steps that she needed to do and in order to be able to do it. And like she said, every single day, she did something towards her goal, right? Every single day she looked in the mirror, she struck those poses until she could do it with her eyes shut. That she knew that if her eyes were shut, she still looked the, the, the exact way she was supposed to look because she, she, ended, she took a dream and she turned it into a profession. And so, and, but that was her, her goal to do that. That was her passion to do that. You guys want to do the same thing. You want to take your dream and you, and you want to turn that into your passion. So you have to have a sense of direction of where you want to go. So you want to put some sort of plan together and be able to achieve that. You, and it's not a big thing. We can do things that are, it could be the smallest minute thing that gives you passion. That's, that's okay. There's no scale on what it is. It's about you feeling good about it. That's what the whole passion part is about. And so let's see the next thing I had on my list. Be clear about your life purpose. So often we're not clear about what it is that we want to achieve. Do you want to focus on your children and, and want them to you know learn certain aspects so that they can carry that on to the next generation? that's a wonderful thing to do. Or do you want to, um, you know, be able to build a network like I do? You know, I want to build a singles network. I want to combine all of us together so no one's ever lonely again and we can all get together and enjoy our lives together. Or do you want to paint? Do you want to be an artist? Do you want to um, be able to sculpt something? Um, do you want to get into acting? Or something like that. There's the tremendous amount of things that we could do, but you want to know, um, you want to know what that is, and you want to be able to be clear about your life purpose. Um, and then I think the other thing is um, think about the times that you've experienced your greatest joy in life. So often we, when we're thinking about our passion, we're also thinking about the things that give us us the biggest joy, right? the biggest happiness, what are the elements of, um, you know, what it is that gives you that, that rocks your boat, you know, what is it that really makes you happy? Um, you know, like if you probably asked my dad, he would probably say when he was younger, driving a car 200 miles an hour or whatever, flying a plane when he was 18 years old. Um, you know, some might say that they, they, their passion was to do, you know, something else like bake a cake from scratch. I mean, I don't know, but whatever makes you happy, that is, that's really what you want to do. And so then what you want to do 
is share your passion. And so, so often if, when we have passions, we don't share them with other people. We don't um, give them um, an essence of ourselves, right? We hold those passions close to our hearts. Why not share the passions that we have with other people? Why not give them um, a taste of who we truly are, give them the essence of who we are? And so I think that that's very, very important. And I think my last thing is going to be, um, let's see, we have a couple, I have a couple other written down here. Um, follow, follow the example of finding a purpose. For instance, if you, um, if you have a purpose in life, you want to follow that example, right? You want to continue on with that. You want to be able to, as you move forward, as you make that transition forward and other people see you, you want to be able to continue living your best life. So you want to keep following that passion. And I think the last thing that I will share is that you want to take time for yourself. We can have a lot of different passions. We can have, um, you know, a, a tremendous amount of skill sets in our lives. We can embrace other people. Um, we can do all these different things, but if we don't take time for ourselves and I'm the biggest, probably the worst for this myself, but we have to take time for ourselves and and really get down deep in who we are and quiet in who we are and really understand what's important to us. And um, we want goodness to come out. So we, we want that to be not only in our passion, but in our health, in our um, how we treat other people. There, you know, there's a, just a gamut of different things. So you want to really be able to tune into who you are. We've had some great shows on here tonight. I don't know if, uh, if you've been listening to us all night long, but let me tell you, we've had some where, um, the, it, it really is would rock your boat. I mean, we've got, you know, the show that we had on earlier today, we talked about, you know, understanding more of um, of who you are, where where you are, the place in life that you are, and the, we had the ten terrains, and and that was that was really pretty awesome show. And so you want to go back maybe and listen to that, but you want to get a better understanding of your purpose in life, your the reason you're here, what your journey is, what what um what what. What are you going to bring to the table? What is what, what is your legacy that you're leaving, right? What is the um, the shift that you're going to create in your life and others? You know, find your passion because when you find your passion and you start living your passion, you start living your best life, what happens is everything around you starts growing. Everything starts blossoming. And just like Jasmine said tonight, you know, she went through a really tough time thinking, okay, the virus, she's, she's in Australia. She wanted to come to the United States. There was a lot of stuff happening here, but she didn't give up because she kept thinking to herself, you know what, we're going to get through this. We're going to work together as a team. Her team worked together to be able to move her and propel her into really going the next level as being a glamour model. And in, in, and I know a lot of people laugh about the uh, Playboy cover. They think it's a, you know, it's a, maybe a sexist type of thing or whatever. I know we had a little bit of a smart aleck comment on that regarding that, but the reality is to, to, that's a very prestigious thing to be able to be a Playboy cover model. Not everyone is selected and not everyone is selected several times. So our guest tonight is a true um, leader of passion. And so I hope that you all will respect that and also respect yourselves to be able to understand the passion that you might have and that you can be able to move forward in your life and embrace other people. And so anyhow, this is the chick's passion and I'm minus one chick and I miss her very much. Kathy, you got to come back because the show's not the same without you. But she was uh, busy tonight doing some personal things and uh, which is absolutely great. And we wish her all the very best and we can't wait for her to be back on. You know, this is a bi-weekly show. So we will be back not next week, but the week after. We're going to be on the boy and girl thing next week. So I hope that you will join us here at the same time, same place. I am CC Shots, the doyenne of relationship building. I hope you enjoyed this show. And I hope maybe it started making you think a little bit about your life. 
a little bit about your passions, a little bit about your purpose, and um, kind of gives you an area in which to be able to start your shift of where you want to be in life and where you, you know, gosh, as, as we as we get older, our life isn't ending. I, I think sometimes it's beginning because we start having the time and being able to creative and do different things that we never, ever dreamt that we would do before. So take that, grab a hold of it and um, move forward. And that's what it's all about. So this is CC Shots. I'm signing off. We've got one more comment. Hopefully it's a nice one. We do. Bye. Bye, Johnny. It's nice to see you. So we will catch you next time.